Okay, first of all, I want to thank Joel and the organization that is sponsoring this little uh, entourage into history of Alvin Weinberg, uh, which I totally support. He is one of my heroes. In fact, he's a hero for a lot of people in the nuclear business. Uh, and so let me start at the beginning uh, and reminisce about uh, Alvin Weinberg. Uh, and I first met him in 1961 when I was a freshman, an 18-year-old freshman at the University of Tennessee. We had a, a freshman uh, student organization in our dorm, and one of the uh, freshmen uh, was a student from Germany whose father was working at ORNL. His name, the father was George Lightfoot, and the student was Stephen Lightfoot. And so we needed speakers for our student organization. So Stephen volunteered to try to get Dr. Weinberg to come over and speak to a bunch of 18 year olds in a dormitory at UT in 1961, which he did. I was the vice president and it was my responsibility to introduce him. And I really didn't know who he was. I didn't know his background. It's, it's a big wheel from Oak Ridge, okay? And so that was my first encounter with Alvin Weinberg. I did introduce him. Uh, he, he gave a nice presentation. Don't ask me what it's about. Uh, but uh, so that was the beginning of a long relationship. And later on, when I did my graduate research at Ornell, I would see Dr. Weinberg uh, walking to lunch. I'd be walking from lunch. We'd be passing each other on the sidewalk. He'd be walking with either H.D. McPherson who was the associate laboratory director at the time, or Eugene Wigner. And so, uh, and I would smile and say hello, and what shocked me is on one of those occasions, he looked at me and smiled and he said, hello, Lee. <laughs> now, how he could remember my name, I have no idea, uh, but, but he did. And so, uh, I mean, that just created more respect that I had for him. Uh, we did, uh, and then when I, at, I left after I got my PhD, went to work at Savannah River. Six years later, I came back, they let me join the faculty, and so I joined the faculty. And I was on the faculty for 20 years, and then they made me department head. And I was department head for 15 years, starting in 1997. Well, after I became department head, uh, we, we had this weekly, almost weekly, uh, colloquium program and it occurred to me with the internet and I was familiar with some rudimentary uh, webcasting that to be good to have our weekly colloquium program and webcast it to the world which we did and then it occurred to me now who are we going to get to kick off our weekly colloquium program each fall semester and I thought uh-huh Dr. Weinberg and so I called him and asked him if he would do that. And he said, of course I will. Which he did for three, four, maybe five years, okay? And so those, those colloquium archives still exist somewhere. I found one earlier this afternoon, and uh, I'll show it to you when we finish this interview. But he would come over and he said, what do you want me to talk about? And I said, just talk about whatever you want to talk about. If you can just reminisce about the Manhattan Project, uh, that would be wonderful. And that's what he did his first one or two uh, colloquium presentations. Uh, and I have one of those for you to look at and I can show you how to access it. But there, there are three or four, maybe five others that I've got people looking for right now. So anyway, he came over, he, uh, gave a wonderful presentation. The technology at the beginning of our colloquium program was terrible. The, the video is gonna be terrible when you see it. But uh, the university finally realized, hey, this is a pretty good way of communicating with the outside world. So the university invested in really good equipment. We had cheap equipment, okay? It's just my technician and me. And they invested in really good equipment and they hired a couple of technicians and all the equipment was portable, so they could go and set up anywhere in the university and within 30 minutes start webcasting. And so that's eventually what we went to, and the quality of the webcast became uh, a lot better. And it's still going on. We do them, I'm not quite, I did it almost 
uh, weekly, I think three times a month, and I think now they do it a couple of times a month. Uh, and then the reason Dr. Weinberg stopped uh, introducing our colloquium program each fall semester is his health was going south. And uh, he was a little bit embarrassed about it. And he said, Lee, I just can't come over and do it. And so the last time we took the portable equipment to his house at Oak Ridge. And hopefully that archive can be found too. Uh, it's it's the, the history of Alan Weinberg, East Tennessee and the United States, uh, the whole nine yards. It's, it's, it's uh, priceless and we need to preserve it. And so that's, and I'm just proud to be a tiny part of it. And that's it. Amen.